All right, guys, we're here today with Noel of HQ Virtual U talking uh, a little bit about outsourcing, some trends in the industry. And Noel, I think what's what's interesting about what you do is that you're actually on both sides of the fence. Mm -hmm. So I don't do that. Most vendors in this industry don't do that. But you've actually, you've dealt with things on the property management side, and now you're doing, um, providing a separate separate service here. Were you dog fooding in the sense that were you scratching your own itch in starting this company? Yeah, I mean, part of it what we were forced into in our market in Phoenix is it got so competitive that when we started a new property management company, it was so much harder to grow than it has been in the past that we had to look at other options. Um, also, coming to these events at NARPM and seeing just all the new technologies and, and different innovations that go on, it really kind of piques your interest in what else you could be trying to do. Um, that's one of the best things we like about these type of uh, conventions is you just learn so much from other people and get new ideas and really easy to start thinking, hey, why aren't I trying to do more? Okay, and so so the inspiration mm -hmm. here, it uh, pushed you to, to start HQ Virtual U. And it, for those that don't know, what's just the, the kind of the Cliff Notes version of what the company does? So basically we manage virtual assistants. So years ago at one of these conventions, we found out that people were using VAs. So we hired VAs for our own property management company, ended up uh, minimizing our staff dramatically while we were still growing. Um, got down to where we don't even need leasing agents anymore. I'm the broker, I handle the leases, but I don't even talk to somebody until they've already applied. So the virtual assistants handle um, the prequal, the showing, running the app, everything's done. All I gotta do is talk to them once they've applied and I know that they're legit. And we use them in that type of asset or um, in that type of way in a lot of different functions for our company. Um, so when we started uh, using them, uh, we realized that you could we could duplicate them and loan them out, then start selling them out to other property managers that we were friendly with across the country. Okay, so so you're, you're inserting this <clears throat> kind of layer here where for a lot of folks, they think about hiring a VA and it's kind of scary, right? Where do they start? Sure. They start on Google, which right. is like this open-ended kind of nightmare of options. You guys are, are, are providing this value-added um, layer of, of management. So have you spoken with folks that have tried to do the VA thing, sure. had a bad experience, and now have given another try and they've actually found it to work here? Yes, uh, definitely. So the, the hardest part is just like hiring any staff, is vetting them, finding right. them, training them, worrying about if they show up on time, all of that kind of stuff. So when you hire your own VA like we did in the beginning, sometimes they show up for work, sometimes they don't. Sometimes they need a day off, they're sick. All that kind of normal stuff that really when you're getting a VA you don't want to have to deal right. with. Um, so we offer them available right now for tasks. So we may have four people working your account. If one of them doesn't show up, they're still, your stuff is still getting done. Um, there is no sick days, there's no vacation days, there's no holidays. We've got somebody handling that for you so that when your office closed, it's still functioning. That makes a ton of sense. So I feel like we're contrasting kind of the unrealistic expectation that someone would have about a VA that is not gonna be fulfilled if they're going direct and doing it on their own with no experience sure. versus you guys are allowing people to actually realize that dream of having a truly remote, constantly available workforce. Right. But what about the training side of things? Talking about other objections, again, VA, it sounds, it sounds like it makes so much sense with these concerns that people have getting in the training factor, the training component, how do you guys handle that and how do you maintain a consistency of quality of, of work? Okay, so if you're hiring me to, if you're hiring us to handle some tasks for you with virtual assistants, you need to train me on how to do those tasks. Right. Um, if you've got processes written out, great. I usually tell people doing a screencast to send to us is even easier. Um, and then we take that, send it down to the Philippines and we train our team. Um, we've got managers too that are doing quality assurance, you know, checking up on everything. Um, but we've got to have real clear instructions. Sometimes that's the hardest part for property managers to get um, started with us is actually giving us instructions so we can start doing work for right. you. Okay. A lot of the stuff is repeatable. I mean, we're doing property where rent manager, building, um, um, you know, a lot of the bigger uh, software companies. So we know how to do projects in there um, at Folio as well. So if you're given a stuff that's really similar, it's pretty easy to take over. Certain tasks like application processing, if you want us to do that for you, we want you to do it our way. That way it's really similar across the board. Okay. We can tweak and customize little things, but that just uh, creates more room for error if we get too off track of what the standard process is. Okay, so, so that's interesting. <clears throat> so parlaying this into another thought, which is, uh, I, I get the impression that a lot of business owners may feel like, hey, we have, we do business, 
our way. Mm -hmm. It's unique. We have our own special processes. And to some degree, that's true. But let's be honest, we're, we're talking about an industry and across the industry, there's going to be quite a bit of commonality. Sure. So you guys have a focus in property management. Do you feel like that gives you quite a bit of leverage in having a deep understanding of this particular set of use cases and therefore having to kind of minimize the relearning that a generic VA company would have to be doing for, for jumping into this industry? Well, sure, we do property management in Phoenix. Right. We started off by having VAs do tasks for us. That's why we're in this, that's why we're selling to this industry on the forefront um, or for the majority of our, of our sales is because we know how to do this stuff. You're right, everybody thinks they've got it figured out. They do their apps better, they do their eviction better, they do their 30-day notice better. Right. It's all pretty similar. Mm -hmm. And not to take away from um, from what they've created, but when they're coming to these classes, they might be learning better ways to do it when they're at conventions like sure. this. Sure. Um, smarter ways, faster ways, but ultimately that it all gets to the same endpoint. So um, if you've got, you know, invoicing for maintenance is all the same. It's different in property where rent manager app folio, but not much. So if you wanted to hand over invoicing like that to us, it's pretty easy as for us to pick it up and start running with it right away. So there may be some forced efficiency here that is a part of, of taking this, this kind of necessary step. You want to grow and scale. There's always going to be painful moments of having to change your process. Mm -hmm. So even if there is some change, it's not necessarily a bad thing as folks you know, need to streamline their business. Right. Yeah, that, that totally makes sense. So um, I'd like to end on this philosophically outsourcing as a part of growing the business. Uh, how long have, has HQ Virtual HQ Virtual you been around for? Uh, two years. All right. So from when you started till now, what are some of the key learnings that you have had around this this model of making outsourcing actually work? Well, the the biggest thing we have learned the hard way that we can't customize standard processes too much. So I can't do application processing different for all 22 of my clients. Um, I've got to do that pretty similar. We've got one that's got a little, a couple of extra steps in there, but everybody else is pretty much doing it our way. Um, also, prepping property managers or, or company owners to understand when you train us and when you hand it over, it's not like that. We need a couple of weeks, maybe a month, iron out the kinks, there might be mistakes. Even though they're VAs and we're watching them, they're still people, stuff can still happen, they can log in, run, whatever. So just getting people to understand, look, test it out, give it a month, then you'll never have to deal with this task again. Um, and thirdly, like, the, like I said, the, the, the hardest thing sometimes is just getting them started to sit down, figure out what their process is. They know how to do it in their head. They know how to do it on the computer, but to hand that over and give it to somebody else. I tell them, what do you do when you hire somebody new? You got to sit them down and train them. How do you train them? If you're just sitting next to them doing it, fine, send me a screencast. Right. If you've got the processes, send them to me. We'll shoot a screencast and train our people. Okay. So So where is this going? Is Where is this trend heading? In 10 years, do you feel like what right now for some folks kind of feels like a, a novelty, a kind of maybe, do you feel like this is going to be a much more common thing in the industry? Because I feel like it's heading that way, but what's your perspective on kind of the, the, yeah, this I, as a trend? I think always mom and pops are going to benefit from us the most because they'll be able to grow without adding a lot of staff. Some of the companies that are already larger, they may like having those many people in their office, but I think once they start testing it out and realizing that they don't have to add staff to grow, that's the biggest way that, that we'll uh, be successful and grow this part of the business. Um, for the savings and cost and having us do stuff that an employee you got to pay in your daily or your um, area's market rate for salary is such a huge difference. It's just crazy not to try it out. So if people want to grow, it's going to go this way. Technology is getting even better. Um, I think it's kind of weeding out leasing agents. I think there's Many years from now, hopefully very many, since I'm a real estate broker, they're trying to get rid of agents too. Mm -hmm. um, so having people like this that can do the stuff on the back end, um, using technology on the front, I think it's really going to shape the whole business going forward. So if people want to try it out, if they're a little bit hesitant, what's the way for them to kind of get in and test the waters without having to completely go give a, whole hog? Give us one task. We, we just got paperwork um, Friday for a company out of California that wants us to just start with sending their 30-day notices. Okay. And, Easy. Wow. So you allow them to really kind of go go micro and then scale yeah. from there. So some companies want us to do everything. Um, I usually say give us one or two tasks that are really tedious for you right now. Hand them over. Let us start taking care of them. That might give you more time to get the process down so I can start taking over maintenance coordination or something um, a little bit more challenging uh, to hand over.
That's great. Well, folks, you heard it right straight from the horse's mouth here. Give it a try, HQ Virtual U. Noel, thanks for taking the time to talk to me today. Thanks, Jordan. See you soon.